lose power if the wind just barely blows, so it's not a shocker. We're falling down on cars, we're falling on, on houses. Tree down blocking two lanes, I-20 westbound. It just was like something very musty and scary. A rare weather event leaving its mark on Metro Atlanta. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeff Hollinger and I'm Jennifer Bellamy. Communities recovering tonight after tropical storm Zeta swept through Georgia with driving rain and fierce winds. And the force of those winds causing widespread, even deadly damage, bringing down large trees in the early morning hours, crashing onto homes occupied by sleeping families, trapping some inside their neighborhoods unable to get out. The chaos cutting power for thousands of Georgians, many still without power. More than 12 hours later, hundreds of crews working to clear tangled and tattered power lines in order to restore electricity. We have team coverage for you tonight. Our crews are tracking damage and cleanup across the metro, including what those power outages mean for the final days of early voting. But we begin with Andy Parati. He is in Gwinnett County, where two people were killed when a tree crashed onto their home. Andy. Hi, Jeff. The fire department is not who actually found the victims inside. It was actually a brother who came to check on a couple here after the storm. And what he found when he got here about noon today is this a very large tree on top of the house. In particular, the back side of the house crushed where a couple was staying and sleeping where they died. Now to give you another vantage point of some video that we shot earlier today by our drone, take a look at what we have to show you. What you're looking at is a hard wood tree where the trunk split in half. One half of the trunk fell on the ground. The other collapsed on the roof where the couple's bed was located, killing them. You can see it crushed the back corner of the home. We're told they are young, a man and a woman in their 20s. It took hours to recover their bodies, two to three hours to safely recover their bodies. The Gwinnett County Fire Department says it responded to this home and 174 other storm related incidents between 4 a.m. and 8 this morning. We've been running trees down since really early this morning, about four o'clock firefighters began to receive an influx of calls all across the county of trees down on the roadway, wires down, trees down on houses. In fact, we had a, a, a an individual hurt uh, in Houston area that was taken to the hospital when a tree fell on uh, her home as well. Now, a longtime neighbor tells me the couple moved into the home, renovated it about two years ago. Their identities have not been released yet until their families are notified. Guys, back to you. Terrible story, Andy. Thank you for that report out of Gwinnett County. A close call for a man in Roswell when a large tree toppled onto this condo on Forest Street. The 27 year old was asleep in a third floor bedroom, but escaped uninjured thanks to the tree snapping in half. Parts of Cobb and Cherokee County is also dealing with major messes. This powerful wind gusts knocking trees onto homes and across roadways. Rebecca Lindstrom has more on the havoc caused by Zeta. This is just one of the trees that's still sitting here on Sewell Mill Road in East Cobb. There's been at least one accident here. A motorist that was trying to turn around and was hit in the process. This is just one reason why police are asking people to stay home, stay off the roads tonight, especially as it gets dark, because not only are there still trees in the road, but we've even seen damaged trees that have yet to fall. Oh, where is she? As the tree sliced through this Marietta home in the middle of the storm, Jeff and his wife Renee Dodd say it became a fight for survival. Their 13 year old daughter was trapped in her bed. Yeah, I was cutting her bed with a knife, anything to get her out. I tried to reach out for her over the tree and we couldn't even reach. Renee said she could see one of her daughter's legs starting to turn purple and both started to hurt. Now out and safe, they know they were lucky. I was like, wow, you know, blessed. In Ackworth, 22 year old Franklin White did not survive when a tree fell onto the room he was renting in the Eastgate Mobile Home Park. They couldn't find him nor see him, but they knew that a tree had fallen through the room. Rescue crews say he was still lying in his bed. Across Cherokee and Cobb County's power is still out for more than 60,000 houses and dozens of streets remain blocked. Right before the bridge. Micah Collins normally uses these forklifts to deliver roofing material, but today he used them to clear Canton Road. I asked him, I said, hey, I've got some equipment out back. My guys aren't going on the road right now due to the weather. 
Would you like some help? Going to work. Families living in Charlton Forge in Marietta wish they could get a crew to their neighborhood. This power line has blocked cars from going in or out, leaving about 300 families stranded. And the whole neighborhood's out walking, and you kind of feel this, you know, sense that you're bound to your house with no power and no internet. Jennifer, Cobb County School District was really hoping they'd still be able to keep students engaged today by using their virtual learning platform. But when they woke up and realized so many people were without power, they knew that not even that was going to work because so many people in Cobb are still without power. Cobb EMC saying it could take them until Saturday to get everyone back online. They have already gone ahead and canceled school for tomorrow. All right, Rebecca, thank you so much for that information. And as you just heard from Rebecca, Cobb County has canceled school for tomorrow. Fulton County has also canceled classes, opting instead for a remote teacher work day. Gwinnett County switching to all digital classes tomorrow, even for students who normally attend in person classes. You can see the full list of school changes scrolling at the bottom of your screen right now. You can also head over to 11alive.com for that information. As so well. utility companies say it could take days to fully restore service to everybody still in the dark tonight. So many without power. You can see the outages. They're clustered in a band across North Georgia. And right now more than a half a million, 500,000 customers remain without power. Crews have been busy all day long. They've been working to overcome obstacles like this one in Roswell, dangerously low power lines. And they're also wrapped in debris, but they're slowly beginning to make some progress. Georgia Power has already restored power to more than 280,000 people, and the state's EMCs have turned the lights back on for more than 160,000 customers so far. There's more help that's on the way. That is an optimistic note through all of this. It was an intense night for anyone who experienced this storm. Jason Bonner sent this video from Hiawassee of the rain coming down sideways. A moment of levity here from Shannon Fitzsimmons, whose Halloween decorations got a little help from the wind out there. Samantha, some pretty spooky scenes out there right there uh, as we get closer and closer to Halloween. Oh my gosh, yeah, it really did set the stage for a kind of a, a frightening start to this weekend as that storm came through this morning. Uh, winds 51 miles per hour in Atlanta and in Rome, just incredibly gusty, and that's why we're still concerned about trees because they were weakened by those gusty winds overnight. And now with winds still gusting up around 30 miles per hour at times this evening and overnight, and then 25 miles per hour tomorrow. That could be enough since the trees have weakened to bring a few more trees down, which is scary indeed as we head into this weekend. So the system itself working quickly off to sea. Behind it, we're going to see some major changes as cooler air is going to be pulled in. This humid air is going to be pushed out, and that means a big cool down for the weekend and even colder air moving in for the beginning of next week. So we'll have those chilly details coming up. Samantha, thank you. Today was the second to last day of early voting, but the Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, says the foul weather caused issues for about 15 counties. Cobb County had to shut four of its 11 polling locations, while Fulton County placed mobile voting units at two of the seven sites that lost power. And as 11 Alive Doug Richard shows us, none of the Douglas County's five early voting sites opened on time. The Douglas County Courthouse is this county's busiest early voting site, which was evident today, even though the site was closed because of a power outage. We saw voters continually showing up to try to get into the locked building, turned away by power outages that compelled the county to initially shut down all five of its early voting sites. Douglas County experienced widespread power outages through much of the day. Another early voting site at Deer Lick Park was likewise shut tight, as would-be voters drove up only to find the gates locked. The polls close for early voting tomorrow, so uh, hopefully the courthouse will be open tomorrow, or I have to find out if there's another place in Douglas County to go vote for. Will this deter you from voting? No, no, I'll try to find a way again. I guess I'll just wait for election day, but no matter what, I'm still voting. By early afternoon, Douglas County had opened two of its five early voting precincts. This was Dog River Park Library, where a line had formed when we visited mid-afternoon. Douglas County hopes to have all of its sites back open by Friday, and the county announced it has added 
two sites to Friday's roster in order to help compensate for the lost time today. You can find those sites on 11alive.com.